The arpeggiator is part of the group of note effects that we have available to us in Studio One, and note effects essentially applies real-time manipulation to incoming MIDI data that can later be rendered down into our recorded MIDI parts if we'd like. The arpeggiator itself will turn any chords or even single played notes on our external keyboards into rhythmic patterns that can then be tweaked in a variety of ways. And one thing to note about the uh, note effects devices and the arpeggiator is that they cannot be found in the effects tab of our browser, but rather in the instruments tab under note effects or by opening up the inspector and accessing the note effects panel. So let's go ahead and load in on our arpeggiator and take a look at its controls. So as I mentioned here, we would need to come to the instruments and then we can see we have a folder for note effects. We can click to expand out and we have the arpeggiator here and we have some default patches or presets that we could grab and load into our track. We can also come over to our track inspector by pressing F4. We then have our note effects panel. If I click on this plus symbol, we can load in the arpeggiator that way as well. Now if we close out our note effects devices at any time, we can access them by clicking this icon here and reopen. Also by coming to the inspector, we can double click on the arpeggiator within the note effects panel. And I'm going to actually bring up our presence with a piano preset loaded so that we can see our virtual keyboard because I'd like for us all to see what keys are being pressed or played and how working with the different parameters are gonna affect those uh, keys and chords that we play back. And let's just take a look at each parameter and we'll start at the very top here. We have power to activate and deactivate our device, an area for working with our presets, um, another area for loading uh, presets, an automation mode selector here if we want to apply automation to our arpeggiator. We then have play modes here. There's seven to choose from in total. And we'll start with this first one, which is an up mode. So I'm going to deactivate the arpeggiator really quick because we'll play back our piano. So we can see that that plays as normal. Uh, then we'll go ahead and activate and we've chosen up mode. So if I go ahead and play a chord now, We can hear what that's doing. And before we move on to the next modes, I want to talk about the rate here. Right now we're at 16th notes, and the rate is going to adjust the resolution of our arpeggiator in relation to our song tempo. So I'm going to actually take this down to 8th notes, and I'm just using my mouse wheel to adjust this parameter. And if I go ahead and play a chord now, we can hear how adjusting the rate has changed the resolution of our arpeggiator. Okay, then the next one we have is uh, down, so it's going to play the highest note down to the lowest, or the highest pitch down to the lowest pitch on our chords, and then cycle back over. We've got up, down. Then we've got down up. We've got a random. We then have a from input. And essentially how this works is whatever note you play first, second, third, it's going to start with those consecutively and play them back in that order. So I will start with playing one note here and then I'll add a second and third and you can see how it's going to arpeggiate those based on the order in which I add them.
Okay, and the last mode that we have is a chord mode. And in chord mode, it's basically going to repeat whatever chord or single note that we have held down until we release it. So if I go ahead and say play C on my keyboard, it's going to repeat that. If I hold down a chord, And then moving on, we have the octave range, and this is basically going to mirror whatever notes that we're playing on our keyboard an octave up. And we can go up three octaves here. So if I choose two and say I'll play C and E, and you'll see how it's going to mirror those up an octave. Now we can come up and add a second. And you can even come and add a third here. But I'm just going to take this back to one. And we've already talked about rate. The swing here, I'll just come to back to our up mode. And the swing is just going to add a swing to your arpeggiated chord. Okay, and then we'll take that off. Now the gate is going to control our the length of our notes. So if we move to the right, then we're going to get more of a legato feel. If we move to the left, we'll get more of a staccato. So we'll move to the right first. And then as we move to the left, okay, uh, I'll control click to return that back to default. And we next have a hold. So if we activate this, whatever note or chord I uh, play on the keyboard, it's just going to hold that. So I've released on my keyboard, I'll play another chord, and release, and so it holds whatever you're playing. Next we have velocity, and actually I'll uh, turn the hold back on. When we use the arpeggiator, it's, it is going to take use your velocity information from your external keyboard uh, to play back, but we also have this velocity parameter where we can then further adjust it afterwards. So I'll play a chord with the hold on, and then as I adjust the velocity, you can see our level is then changed accordingly. And next we'll move on to the pattern sequencer here, and we can Again, activate that by clicking this lead there. And we'll start off with eight steps being active. And when working with these, essentially, if we adjust these bars vertically, we're changing the velocity or the level of our notes. And then if we adjust horizontally, we're changing the length. And we can come down to the bottom. If we'd like to take advantage of all of the 32 steps, we would just drag click the arrow, and then if you note know, we're on 1 through 16, by clicking the arrow, we access the other 16. So I'll come back to the first group, 
and then just let's change this back to 8 just for simplicity's sake. And when we're in the pattern mode, we have a choice to use the velocity information here. So what I'll do is play back a chord here. Make some velocity adjustments. So you can hear how that velocity is affected by our adjustments here within the uh, sequencer. Now we can choose fix and it's basically going to use, we, we still have control with this general velocity here, but if we use fix then it's just going to use this. And it's going to disregard any of our velocity information here in the sequencer. So that's the difference between pattern and fix. If I come back to pattern, and then again, moving horizontally, we adjust our node length. And even if we drag horizontally, We can still access the other controls, even if, say, this number two is on top of here, which I think is pretty cool. And also note that even if we make adjustments to the uh, length, note length, we can still use our gate control to, as an overall control of our note length as well. And so that is using the arpeggiator within Studio One Three.